Welcome back to Real America. Well, over the past four years, of course, there's been a lot of talk about nationalism versus globalism. For decades, we've seen the negative effects of globalism that's had on the American worker. And now more than ever, it seems the left and the right have been divided on the subject of communism, socialism, and democracy. Matter of fact, when it comes to communism, how about this? Speaker Nancy Pelosi actually admitted not too long ago on CNN that China would prefer to see former Vice President Joe Biden as the president instead of President Trump. Hmm. And we know President Trump is all about putting America first. Biden, of course, serving under the Obama administration, where we need a magic wand to bring manufacturing jobs back. They were globalists. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Take a look at Nancy saying this, and then we'll get to the next interview. But the Chinese, they, what, what, they, what they said is China would prefer Joe Biden, whether they do. That's their conclusion, that they would prefer Joe Biden. You heard that. We didn't edit that. That's what she said. China would prefer Joe Biden. We know that President Trump has been pretty much at a trade war with China since he took over. Uh, we've been hearing of the three-phase deal. We've only had phase one signed to change the trade deals so we can make more things in America. So I want to discuss this topic more. And joining me now, Spanish radio host, lawyer, and author, Cesar Vidal. Cesar, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Really fine, but I'm an American citizen, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I was born and bred in Spain. That's true. I have passed most of my life in Spain. But uh, since two years, I'm American citizen, and I insist I'm very proud of it. Great. You're a Spanish-American, but American first. How about that? Spanish descent. Uh, thank you for pointing that out, sir, and thank you for saying it so loudly and proudly because uh, I'm sure that you followed the rules and went through the immigration process. Yeah, no, I know it's convoluted and it costs a lot and it took forever, but you did it legally and the right way, and now you are a proud American, correct? Totally, totally. And, well, I think this is very important because history teaches us that when a state has not the control of the frontiers, this state is going to its destruction. This is a real historical lesson. And it has not any kind of discussion. It has happened a lot of times before during the history. Yeah, we've seen communism try and creep in back in the late 20s and 30s, uh, during and after the Great Depression. Of course, when people are in need and hurting, it seems to always creep in. It came back in around the 60s and the big movement, and now the 2019, 2020 is really creeping in. I believe, and I'm 45 years old, I'm not sure of your age, sir, but I would say this by far is probably one of the most, if not the most, uh, important presidential elections in history. Do we take the country towards its origins and keep with capitalism and democracy in a free society? Or do we go towards socialism, globalization, and eventually communism? Now, I may sound like I'm someone who's trying to fear monger. I am not doing that whatsoever or gaslight the issue. This is common sense when you look at it. Your takeaway from what I just said, do you believe that that is what's being pushed right now and is trying to creep once again back into America? No doubt about this. We are living right now the most crucial election in America, probably since the election of Abraham Lincoln. This is very important because the future of the country is now in this election. And we have very, very clear sides. For example, if you watch Joe Biden telling that I'm going to control what's happening in the Brazil forest, this is a radical globalist discourse. We are going to make a global control of the economics, of society, of politics, over all the world. And the, the speech of Donald Trump is total contrary to this. I, I'd say that this is not a nationalist uh, discourse, it's a patriot discourse. And there's a big difference. The uh, General de Gaulle, who was the, the French resistance against the Nazis in World War II, uh, said, well, the patriots love their country and don't hate other countries. The nationalist needs to love their countries and hate other countries. The goal was a patriot. Trump is a patriot. Hitler was a nationalist. Right, and that's the tie that the left and media is trying to make when he says that he's a nationalist versus a globalist. They're trying to tie him to Hitler, call him a Hitler, call him Nazi, yada, 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 like they do when 
I get your point, and that's exactly how I describe myself and a lot of my good friends as patriots. We're being patriotic to this nation because we want the way that we came about to continue a democratic, free, capitalist society. We don't want socialism. We don't want communism. And we also believe in government not taking care of us. But by God, you go out and do it and find it for yourself. That's the American way. And to me, that's being patriotic. Switching gears now on Saturday in downtown D.C. Take a look at this. Hundreds and hundreds of Republicans and the Walk Away Movement campaign all came together and led a big march to encourage people to leave the Democratic Party.